this tutorial I want to look at Auto Ripple and what Auto Ripple can do for us as well as a couple of options for customizing our toolbar. Now before we get into Auto Ripple let's just talk about customizing our toolbar. In the last tutorial we did things such as splitting clips. Say you actually want to have a button to enable you to split. If you're not really a keyboard shortcut user but you want to have a button on your toolbar to split a clip or various other options. Well under the options dialog box just above customizing your keyboard you can also customize the toolbar and when you go to customizing a toolbar you actually have the option to go through now you can't maximize this unfortunately it's quite small but you can actually add little icons to your toolbar which will allow you to change how it looks so let's have a little look so what do I want to add um, I've got a separator well we can add more separators if you like so you can add a separator at the end. There you go. That's added a separator at the end. And then you see you've got trim start, trim end. We could say have, let's go down. There's the split icon. So I could add split. There's split at the end. And maybe we want to have the ability to add a new, say, uh, a new audio track. Add a new audio track. And let's look for new video track as well, maybe. New video track. And then we can add that in. So you see now we've added in a separator and the ability to split add new audio or add new video tracks simply by the click of a button at the top of our toolbar and then you can actually decide is it in the right place for you so let's take split for example maybe I really want split over here so I can go move up and you can see every time I click move up if you watch its progress I'm moving it to a different place on the toolbar and now split is right next to snapping options so if you want to add bits and pieces in, or even take bits and pieces out, say, I'm never going to use that option, you can get rid of it, but you can also click this one that says Reset. And Reset takes it all back to its default out-of-the-box look. So do bear in mind that you have the option to customize the toolbar very easily. So I'm going to click Close, because I don't actually want to add that in, because I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut S. It's very easy to use. But what is Auto Ripple? Auto Ripple is a button. We've got a whole bunch of little buttons here which are really interesting. This one here, by the way, is snapping. So if I was to take this clip here and pull it backwards and forwards, you can see it wants to either snap to the cursor, snap to the next clip. But watch what happens if I turn off snapping. Snapping's now off. And now, well, it's not really going anywhere. I'm not going to the cursor. I'm not going to the actual item. I don't know if I've exactly hit it, although I do get a bit of a feedback to say I am actually cross dissolving across here. So it can be very useful because sometimes you don't want things to snap and you actually want to overlap them, what have you. But nine times or maybe even 99 times out of 100, you want snapping on. But for those few moments when you don't want it on, you can turn it off with a keyboard shortcut up here. The one next to it, by the way, is giving you the ability to automatically turn off crossfading. When I pull one clip over another, I get the crossfade, if you remember, and we get that lovely lavender bar that tells us when we've, we've done precisely a second. You can, at the same time, turn off that ability. So now it's gone, so that when I pull this across, all I'm doing is sort of overwriting or going over the clip that's before it, or pulling under the clip. So rather than creating crossfade, I'm dragging clips over or under, depending on their order on the timeline. Now at the moment I like crossfade, so I'm going to use that. So this button here is about auto ripple. And what do we mean by auto ripple? Well, there's a little drop down which means you've got choices before you turn the button on and off. And those choices are affected tracks, affected tracks, buses, markers and regions, or all tracks. And let me show you what it means by all tracks. So it's not turned on even though I've selected that until I click the icon. But when I click the icon, it's turned on. And if I select a clip, say this one here, and I was to hit delete, look at this track but also the track below. So if I hit delete, notice that that track automatically filled up the space and here the space is automatically filled up. I'm going to control Z, turn off auto ripple for a minute and do exactly the same thing. Clip selected, get rid of it, I've left the great big space, which I then need to select all the other clips and shift them along to fill the space up. Okay, so I'm going to undo that and undo that again. So when you click this button and you have all tracks selected, as we do at the moment, so make sure all tracks and turn it on, when I get rid of anything, get rid of that one there, hit delete, 
get rid of everything below it and cause all kinds of odd crossfades and what have you. That's not an option I tend to use very much, Control-Z. But what I do use quite a lot is another option here, which is the one that says Affected Tracks. And when you click on Affected Tracks, and just make sure it's selected, and the icon is on, when I delete a clip, so say I delete the one that we started off with there and hit Delete, it's not affected the tracks below, but it has got rid of the item above. But also, look at this. When I start to trim, so I'm going to trim this clip here, so go this side, you can see it's trimming the event. You see you've got little icons telling you which event you're trimming. So on this side, you can see I'm trimming this way. When I trim and let go, it automatically fills up the space. But if I was to trim out and let go, it would, all, again, automatically fill up the space. Even though it looks like it's creating crossfade, it's not. When I let go, it trims. And if I trim this clip here and trim that one out, it fills up the space, leaving me without any spaces. So Auto Ripple is a really valuable little function to be able to move things around and not have spaces because what you don't want is spaces. You can still move clips and create spaces, but when you're actually deleting things or trimming things or moving around, it's a really great way of making sure that you don't end up with gaps on your timeline. So that's Auto Ripple and that's customizing your toolbar. Some very powerful features and things that I tend to use a great deal when working with Sony Vegas Pro. My name's Andrew Davis. Hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.